Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. It's a pleasure to open hearing number 12 of 182 period of sessions regarding the situation of indigenous peoples and the right to the environment in the context of uh, salmon farming in Chile. Here today is the country reporter, dear Commissioner Joel, my dear sister Margaret Mary Macaulay, reporter for women's rights and Afro-descendants rights, and Commissioner Estuardo Rallon, who is reporter for persons deprived of liberty, my dear a special reporter for social, culture, economic, and environmental rights, Soledad Garcia Munoz. The request for this hearing was made by different communities, among them the Mapuche community, the Yagam Bahia community, Greenpeace Chile, and it's an honor to welcome you. I also want to welcome the representatives of the state of Chile. Regarding the methodology of this hearing, we will have 20 minutes for the civil society. The same time will be given to the state, then the commission, we have 20 minutes. And afterwards, we start the second round of comments. The civil society will have 10 minutes, the state 10 minutes, and final comments uh, by the commission. It is an honor to give the floor to the civil society for 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, honorable commission, commissioners, present here today. It's an honor to us to be here today. We are going to start the presentation. We are going to share our screen. Roxana is going to share her screen. Please let me know if you can do that. You can share your screen. We would like to thank, first of all, this space. My name is Estefania Gonzalez. I am a coordinator of Greenpeace Chile. And here we are going to present the situation of indigenous peoples and the right to the environment in the context of salmon farming in Chile, which is a very important issue in our country. This presentation is focused on the experiences of the communities that have been affected and are present here today. And the structure of our presentation will be the following. We are going to make an introduction and presentation of this issue. I am going to be presenting that. Then we're going to make a presentation by by the indigenous community, Yagan Bahia Mejillones, by Maria Luisa Munoz, then a presentation by the Cahuescar community for the defense of the ocean, where Leticia Caro will be making the presentation. Then the presentation by the Mapuche, Wiliche, Pepuikelem community, by uh, Francisco Vera Miyaken from that community. Then we're going to make a presentation about the human rights that are being violated by Enrique Viale, environmental uh, lawyer and expert. And we are going to share with you some conclusions and requests. In order to introduce this topic, it's important to know that salmon farming is the second exporting sector in the country with more than mm, a thousand licenses and a growing expansion in indigenous territories and in very important ecosystems. Uh, many communities depend on those. More than 30 years of salmon farming have been characterized by the absence of the participation of indigenous communities. The approval of this giant productive sector has not included uh, 
uh, researches regarding environmental impacts or indigenous consultation every year we leave several environmental disasters such as escape of uh, fish and the death of um, whales and different spills that have affected the um, food sovereignty, constant contamination of the ocean and ecocide that has affected territories. It contradicts the legislation of Chile that has established in its report the lack of um, control to salmon farming by different uh, state organizations in a systematic way. That's why communities have to constantly resort to court, um, to the justice system to uh, make visible these uh, illegal activities that are supported by the state of Chile. It is very important to uh, stop the development of new salmon farms to respect the will of several indigenous communities along the territory to have their uh, territories free from salmon farms. That's why I would like to give the floor to the communities. Thank you. Hello, how are you? Hi, Wafa. My name is Maria Luisa Muñoz. I'm a representing of the indigenous community from Yagan Bahia Mejillones. I am of the Yagan community and I would like to uh, thank you for being present today. Our territory is in the south part of the territory, Cabo de Hornos, and it has been present in the territory for more than 6,000 years. We are alive and surviving peoples. In 2002, UNESCO declared that we are a reservation of the biosphere as one of the most uh, biosphere um, lands in the planet. We have fought uh, restlessly for the protection of our ancestral land, which we consider a territory of land. In January 2019, we saw the first um, boat of the Salmon Farm Company for the development of these farms in our territory. We um, rapidly developed a resistance with different communities, organizations at a regional, national, international level, achieving the Territory Reagan movement. The, our main goal is to prevent our territory from becoming another sacrifice area. We have carried out several actions to reject these funds. Since January, we demanded meetings with local and national authorities because we identified that this process was um, distorted. In March, we had uh, the visit of the kings of Norway, main investors of this uh, company being developed here. We traveled to Santiago in April and presented before the Senate. And we also made a request saying that the license and the qualification of uh, environment qualification should be discarded. Also, we uh, presented a read for the lack of compliance of uh, precautionary measures. In August 2019, in Uzi, we declared that um, this area could not be uh, licensed. And we also achieved a landmark in our country and the alerts that we may regarding the impacts on the industry was not random. Today, they have to respond to the state regarding the lack of uh, legal practices. We also presented our testimony in the case uh, I mean, that threatened our water reservoir, making reservations to the state of Chile, such as ratifying the Escazú agreement, but they did not do that. The uh, state is being an accomplice uh, to these extractivist activities. In December 2020, for a uh, second time, we also presented this uh, request that was inadmissible. And in June this year, based on the illegal activities, said that it lacked um, 
arguments, he questioned that we are the only community making this request, but all state organis organisms mm, recognize that we are only Yagan community present in non-ancestral territory. They have questioned if only our community have a communal use of the land. We have lived in this land for 6,000 years without interruption. They deemed our request inadmissible regarding the uh, competence of our organs of the state, such as the regional commission of the uh, coastland, and they act abusing their power in spite of this resolution. And today, few people are part of our community because of genocide, changes in our food. Uh, we have suffered diseases, just to name a few causes, because our community has been victim of the violation of systematic human rights violations supported by different states, such as uh, Chile, Argentina, Great Britain. That's why we request the EMPO to deem our request admissible at as our right to the land is being violated, and this is affecting our cultural practices. We are facing a climate world um, crisis. Climate change is uh, taking place right now. We are suffering the consequences. The humanity is in danger. The biodiversity is being endangered, and we have time to do something about this. Thank you. I want to give the floor to Leticia. Hello to everyone. I am of the Kawaskai community. I am a Kawaskai woman, honorable commissioners. We are communities of the Kawaskai community, nomad, a um, community that was victim of a genocide not so long ago, a genocide that has been carried out by the state. And we are recovering from this situation in spite of the ethnocide that it still exists. Our communities that defend the ocean, the heart of our cosmovision, continue to defend themselves from the policies established by the state to favor a businessmen such as it happened in the past by the developing of different activities in our ancestral lands. The development of salmon farming is not a coincidence as the state of Chile through policies has been systematically violating our human rights. We had to face um, an indigenous consultation due to the reclassification of the Cahuescar National Park. Among the final agreements, it is the, we have the prohibition of um, the uh, harvesting of a certain exotic species, and this is not being respected. The Council of Ministers for Sustainability separates land from the ocean, making this decision before the consultation, violating free, prior, and informed consultation. That's why we have many resources and administrative resources to protect our land and the ancestral right that uh, we need to enjoy. We have asked for these lands in the coastlands um, to be respected. The law is not being respected. That's why for this to be admitted, we had to resort to a read. The food sovereignty regarding hand collection and fishing are deeply affected. The salmons that escape invade our spaces of collection, affecting autochthonous species. The industrial waste is invading our land sacred spaces that are constantly invaded by the industry. Our right to water belong to industrial uh, companies, and we have be witnessed how a river um, became dry. And we have to see how impunity continues and how different uh, species, such as seawalls and uh, birds, die including um, policies continue if you're not considered as subject as people with rights. 
these social cultural damage has reached critical levels, some of them irreversible. The tangible and intangible um, patrimony is in danger. We will not see the world and spirituality as our ancestors uh, saw that and as we want future generations to consider. That's why we request that the recommendations are focused to take immediate actions to stop the exploitation in our land and also the compliance with current legislation. This takes place in indigenous territories. Now we will now listen to the reality of um, the Willyche Pepukelen community. I would like to greet all the honorable commissioners of the Inter-American Commission. I am Francisco Vera from the Yulicha Pupukelem Mapuche community in the Chacao uh, channel. I am also a human rights defender and I have worked with the Mapuche community and other indigenous communities in this uh, valley. Today, December the 15th, the Chilean government has passed a new anti-terrorist law aimed at persecuting indigenous peoples, especially the Mapuche community. I would like to say that I have been an active um, defender of the Bakenche law that creates the coastline spacing for indigenous peoples and to for the ratification of the uh, convention 169 of the ILO. Regarding what has been mentioned here, I would like to say that what has been demanded at the beginning of this presentation and after the statements of both um, speakers uh, who spoke before me show that the degree of violation of our rights that we have suffered in, historically in Chile. They have mentioned genocide. All indigenous communities have suffered genocide on the hands of the uh, Chilean government. These violations affect our human rights and affect our diet or changes our diet. Regarding this issue, salmon farming, indigenous rights, and the environment, I would like to say that in our land, more than three decades ago, the process of development of salmon farming started in our ocean, but the speaker has some internet uh, problems. The connection is interrupted. In 2006, the Agro Super Consortium violated current legislation in the fjord. And now, after 13 years, There's a demand presented by our community before the commission for the development of that project. However, we have not received any formal uh, response from this commission. I uh, request this to be reviewed because this affects our communities, in particular, the Pepukalen uh, community. I would like to highlight as well that Chile today ha systematically violates the rights of our communities, the right to the coastlands, in particular, that guarantees the law that has been mentioned before, that has been passed. There is a problem with the speaker's connection. And several times, 
uh, our requests have been denied and the under secretariat of fishery denies the possibility of uh, the coastline uh, pointed out that the limits are not established but it's their duty to verify these limits not the communities that's why we request this honorable commission to make a formal request to the Chilean state to guarantee our rights to respect current legislation and to establish a hold to the development of the uh, or a moratorium to the development of salmon farming as this constantly violates our human rights. That is what I can say. Chile has systematically violated our rights and it continues to do that with the consent of authorities, local authorities, and also international organizations that should be protecting our rights. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to us. The growth of the salmon farming industry has extended to several territories of the country. This expansion was not only allowed, but also fostered by the state. And these are the impacts which are the most evident, the use of uh, remedies, the, the leak of salmons, the destruction of the local fauna, etc. Those impacts affect all the ecosystem and they reach the, com the indigenous community who are vulnerable because of their relation to these ecosystems. It's a duty of the state as a warrantor of the human rights to comply with the local regulations. This duty of the state as warrantor implies to um, enforce the laws so that the companies and people can respect those laws and require the companies or demand the company to uh, explain how is it that they take into account these in principle three. In the fact, in this situation, the Chilean state has failed for instance, has not complied with the coastal law and it has also failed in its role as a warrantor facing the salmon industry. But the different ways of intervention of the states in the indigenous territories, in the benefits of the salmon industry have not had consultation, prior consultations to the communities, even though it's an obligation to carry them out. There is also a lack of information. And this omission in pollution and intervention on decisions such as the use of the coastal space facilitated a slow but continuous violations to the human rights of the of the indigenous people who are present today. What was said before enshrine some of the rights of the indigenous people, especially the right to consultation, the approval of projects that uh, uh, pose a risk to the indigenous communities, the right to community property, the limitation of the ancestral territory, the um, right to engage, to participate, to environmental justice, and the due diligence by the state, the impact of the development or investment projects and the concessions that affect the environment equality before the law, they are not equal, they are not equal before the law. So therefore we can evidence that the state of Chile has facilitated the expansion of the salmon farming industry in despite of the negative and irreversible impact it has on the indigenous peoples and their ecosystems. Apart from these, the state has 
prevented them from accessing the legal tools to enforce their rights, which constitutes a very serious violations of the human rights of the indigenous communities that have spoken before me. Thank you. In order to close these 20 minutes and thanking you for this space, due to the seriousness of the situation of the um, of this context, we request this commission and its special rapporteurship on environmental, uh, economic and cultural rights to follow and monitor this issue focusing on the human rights violations, especially those of the indigenous people. We also wanted to consider this in your annual report. We also call upon the state to carry out administrative measures who, which uh, stop the breaches of right and the hindrance of the different spaces, inventing requisites that are not in the regulations, and we must provide warranty and justice for the communities affected by the salmon farming industry in their territories. Therefore, we request this commission to receive the request of the communities to take into consideration each of the things mentioned here so as to respect their indigenous rights. Thank you very much. Thank you. The thank you to the representatives of the civil society organizations, the voice of the three indigenous people here by represented very articulated presentation. I would also like to thank Greenpeace Chile. I would also like to greet our executive secretary, Tanya Renault, who is here. And now we will give the floor to the representation of the state during 23 minutes, because you used three, three more minutes. So we will give the floor now to the state. We cannot hear. Sorry, I was muted. Okay, I couldn't hear you. Okay, we will resume the time. You have 23 minutes. It's a pleasure to hear you. Good afternoon. I would like to greet the second vice president, Flavia Piavesan, the commissioner May Macaulay, the commissioner Joel Hernandez, reporter for Chile, and Eduardo Ralón, and the reporter Soledad Garcia. We would also like to greet the petitioners of this hearing. We value the uh, com the calling of this hearing, and we repeat our commitment with the Inter-American System of Human Rights, with the protection of human rights, and with the compliance of international obligations assumed by the state. In this presentation, we would like to address a topic that had been po put forward, uh, giving backgrounds on the measures uh referred to and about the institutionality in Chile to protect the related human rights. The um, Eugenio Zamorano Villalobos from the Subsecretariat of Aquaculture and Fishing will talk about aquaculture in general and salmon farming in particular. Then Marcela Varafica sub uh, director of the Minister of Aquaculture and Fishing will explain the monitoring carried out. Then Ignacio Mali, director of indigenous development will talk about the support program to the indigenous communities and the defenders of human rights. And finally, if 
We have time. We will give the floor to Carolina Salas from the Subsecretariat of Human Rights, who will talk about our program of human rights and companies. So we will give the floor now to Eugenia Zamorano. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. The state of Chile, aware of the obligation it has in economic activities, not only its social and human aspect, but also for them to be sustainably developed and complying with all the interests of people has always been uh, focused on regulating such activities especially aquaculture, because it is developed in national goods of public use. So therefore, an institutionality has been established which regulates each of the aspects which the international standard have imposed. These allowed us to have the third economic activity and it positions Chile among the main aquaculture countries in the world. The aquaculture in Chile can only be developed complying with the requirements in the aquaculture law, which establish the measures so that it can operate in a compatible way. The regime of access to marine aquaculture is through a concession. This is an administrative act through which the state grants to a person, including communities, uh, the right to use the land so that then can carry, carry out aquaculture activities. In order to ask for such concessions, that certain requisites have to be met. They have to be in areas which are apt for aquaculture. This means those areas which has been established for such activity with prior consultation to the people within its, uh, its perimeter. And had, it also has to, it cannot overlap another concession established within which we have the total space of uh, uh, indigenous people to which I'm going to refer. It cannot overlap a natural bank of hydrobiological resources and any stakeholders, including indigenous communities, can claim with a uh, resonated background. And it has to be also subject to an impact assessment study. And there uh, it will be a consultation process in from which the indigenous community can take part. Then we have to comply, they have to comply with several regulations and we will highlight the following. There are two instruments, the preliminary characterization of the area and environmental information. The characterization has is a baseline for the granting of the concession and the uh, environmental performance of the activity will be assessed and these indicators may um, prohibit the entrance of new uh, species to the center if the indicators are not re-established if they were so. And the distance between concessions and coordinated measures are um, regulated, and this includes a sanitary rest of three months and density. The density is the maximum amount of species, and we um, this constitutes an incentive. The state of Chile also is concerned with the coastal access of, of, from the indigenous community. And there was a special law to create the marine coastal space of the indigenous people. A part of this coastal area is granted to indigenous peoples and they have to show that they have used the uh, custom, custom, custom use of that space. This law grants a privileged right 
in favor of the indigenous community and this right does not apply to any other person and this suspends the uh, granting of any other uh, request in any space and this is applicable to all projects including those who are in favor of the state this is why the state of chile grants these spaces and grants privilege to these communities for since the approval of the law hundreds of communities have requested coastal space for their administration administration these Kenches communities in the center, Mapuches in the, in the north, and Hawenches in the south. There are 10 coastal spaces established, and these is equal to over 5,500,000 uh, hectares. So there are 827 management areas with uh, an amount of 32,000 hectares. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before giving the floor to Marcela Lara, I would like to greet the Executive Secretary of the Commission, Tanya Renon. I had mentioned her. So Marcela Lara, please, you have the floor. Thank you. I will introduce the strategy and the institutionality in terms of salmon farming. There are three, there are three stakeholders involved in the monitoring, the um, marine, the uh, Office of the Environment and the Ministry of Aquaculture. So we have to check the regulations and in the superintendency of the environment has to execute and coordinate the monitoring of the the environmental re regulation. First, the aquaculture concessions have to perform uh, environmental impact assessments. The activities of monitoring are carried out directly by the different officials of the institutions and through stakeholders who are authorized by the monitoring agencies. Each institution has its strategy defined depending on the risk. And there are campaigns in the culture centers the sorry in the farming centers there are 350 farming centers and there are around 2000 monitoring institutions between the three institutions the service through independent parties con hired by the state carries out the environmental impact assessment to date 4,600 reports have been issued. So these are 460 reports that are performed on a on a yearly. In Chile, in 20, 2007, the service has had a progress in its strategy of uh, monitoring of the salmon industry. So we have to adapt it based on the te technological advances and the monitoring tools and to the changes in regulation. We would like to underscore the growth of environmental monitoring through the execution of inspections, depending on the risk in order to verify and to use new technologies. We mentioned some of them, the use of uh, submarine robots, the use of satellite images, the use of the uh, satellite positioning of um, uh, ships, of drones, and oceanographic methods. The POSAG, which is one of the most important tools we use in the monitoring strategy, all the ships that have aquaculture services 
are record registered and we can carry out the monitoring of all the navigation channels this is therefore a very important tool that we use a new tool that we have been using in the last few years are satellite images. In this case, the superintendency of environment has a platform that monitors through image, satellite image, the farming centers, and this allows us to strengthen the fiscalization strategy remotely. Then we also have action plans facing um environmental contingencies for accidents or incidents a very important event was the creation of a committee which allows us to coordinate in a better way different public institutions that participate when there is any incident that committee is made up by the ministry of environment the ministry of health Subsecret Secretariat of uh, Fishing and Aquaculture, Superintendency of Environment, and the General Direction of Maritime Territories. And that committee is uh, operates centrally and regionally. Thank you. Thank you. And now I will give the floor to the director of the CONAE. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Good afternoon to our commissioners, civil society representatives and representatives of the delegation of the state of Chile. Regarding the third topic, programs to support the development of indigenous communities, in, com in particular, we make reference to the development of uh, reports for the use of land as within the framework of the uh, law that establishes the demarcation of the land, the uh, Secretary of Indigenous Development um, develops different uh, reports in that sense. These should be on uh, based on the uh, constitutionary use of the land by indigenous communities this is uh, a process requested by indigenous communities and this request should indicate the requirements that show the customary use of uh, land uh, in the coastline and the this report is carried out by a multidisciplinary team made up by attorneys, anthropologists, marine biologists that analyze the use of marine uh, lands gathering primary and secondary information. Primary information is gathered in in local visit in a coordinated um, visit take into account uh, different um, situations such as climate situations. This includes different aspects such as the distance between territories and the team of professionals uh, coordinated to gather this information. The secondary information has to do with a specialized uh, biography among, bibliography among other things. This information, the data gathered in local secondary information are used to determine whether the use um, regarding the use of uh, requested by uh, the communities uh, comply with the law and regulations. There are six reports that have been concluded and six are being drafted and are about to be published regarding the management of the licensing process within the programs for the development of indigenous communities, we need to highlight that our uh, unit financing through public licensing, the development of uh, programs for the management of coastlines for the requesting com indigenous communities. They have one year to present the plans. Once these plans are approved, they sign an agreement for the distribution of the use of land with the requesting communities. 
within this licensing process um, by request of the petitioners, this could include the uh, dissemination of the space, logos, videos, uh, training, different surveillance uh, instruments and management. Within a period of one year since this uh, space is allocated, the Association of Petitioners should present before the Under Secretariat of Fishery a uh, management plan that should include all the activities that will be developed in the coastline and the management plan grants the users of this space the possibility to carry out their activities where their activities will take place. And this reflects different uh, aspects such as uh, preservation of nature, religious practices, cultural activities. Regarding the management plan that is based on a program to extract certain species will be granted if petitioners extract hydrobiological resources from the space uh, guaranteeing the sustainability of the species that are uh, used uh, by the communities. All these plans that have been approved have, are currently implemented. 12 are have been approved so far, four have concluded, and two are being executed. As a pilot program in 2021, we have financed initiatives to benefit women through the Fund for Indigenous Development to support the, the, the uh, network that is uh, that has to do with collective or individual training to disseminate uh, initiatives and collaboration, benefiting 51 families with more than $46,000. In the region of uh, lakes, we also carried out a public uh, competition to promote the strengthening of initiatives, indigenous rural initiatives to promote or develop uh, indigenous culture that are directly related to activities to improve their well-being and a quality of life. This also benefits um, different women and their families. Regarding the situation of human rights defender, it is important to point out that regarding the alleged harassment towards uh, human rights defenders, the state of Chile has a strong uh, policies to safeguard the uh, rights of human rights defenders. And we have a public ministry that is autonomous in charge of investigating and punishing illegal activities and independent courts that safeguard constitutional um, rights. This request of a hearing does not make reference to any particular person, but we need to highlight that in case this uh, commission requires information any regarding any particular event, we will uh, send any uh, specific investigations through the mechanisms established in the laws and constitutions for this matter. Thank you. Thank you, Director. I think, Commissioner, that we still have some time for the state. So I will now give the floor to Carolina Sala of the Under Secretariat uh, Human Rights. 
Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone. The Under Secretariat on Human Rights in our country is the body created to propose coordinate management in, in connection with human rights. Its main goal is to incorporate a human rights approach in public management of the different institutions of the state and the creation, implementation, and assessment of public policies with a human rights approach and social impact approach. These policies policies are the main um, national plan regarding human rights and uh, companies and human rights coordinated by the Ministry of Justice and Human Rights through the Under Secretariat for Human Rights. In connection with companies, we need to highlight that the national plan for human rights and companies that represents a public policy to consolidate a culture of respect and promotion for human rights uh, in company through the implementation of different guiding principles in companies and uh, human rights that have been published by the United Nations. It's based on three pillars. First of all, the duty of the state to protect human rights, the responsibility of companies to respect human rights, and thirdly, is related to uh, reparation mechanisms. The first version of the plan started in August 2017 and concluded in December 2020 with 20 implementations, 13 actions that have not been started, and uh, there were a total of 146 measures. We are drafting the second version of the initiative within the framework of the recommendations made by international human rights organizations, experts, observations, um, report that has been drafted by the University uh, Católica of Chile, among other instruments. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. So we conclude the participation of the state, Madam Commissioner. Thank you to the representatives of the state for um, all the information that has been provided, which was very clear for your articulate presentation and for respecting the time. I will now give the floor to my colleagues. First of all, to the country rapporteur, dear Commissioner Joel. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon to you, to the civil society organizations, representatives of the state. I could like to start by thanking the uh, petitioners for requesting this hearing in within the framework of this period of sessions, requesting a hearing about this uh, topic. During the last uh, two years of mandate as a country reporter, I have not had another opportunity to listen to the concerns of indigenous communities in connection with a specific economic activity, which is the salmon farming industry. Uh, have uh, enjoyed the presentation that has been made. Many of us uh, enjoy the Chilean salmon and what you have said, it's uh, very important regarding the context, but what really caught my attention, the uh, presentation made by the state regarding the institutionality that exists regarding fishery and aquaculture, and in particular, which is the topic of this hearing, how the coastlines are uh, managed for indigenous communities and that is the topic of interest to, today there are two dimensions one the human rights to a healthy environment and different measures are connected to this the measures uh, taken by the uh, Chilean state so that aquaculture in general is sustainable and another dimension which is also very important is to know how the indigenous communities benefit from this economic activity I would like to take advantage of this dialogue to get closer to understand this issue. And I would like in the second um, 
presentation by the civil society, we would like to know how you've been involved with the programs presented by the state for the development of indigenous communities in the coastlines, whether you have participated and what was the direct benefit from this activity, the concerns environmental concerns are very clear, but I would like to know to what extent the indigenous communities have participated and benefited from this economic activity. And to this date, I would like to invite you to consider the ratification of the Escazú Agreement, which is a key instrument today to strengthen the right to a healthy environment, giving civil society organizations additional measures that allow them to exercise their role as human rights defenders through specific measures regarding access to information. That's all. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Flavia Piovesan, President of this hearing. Thank you, Commissioner Joel Hernandez, country reporter. I have the honor of giving the floor to my dear colleague, my sister Margaret. You have the floor now. Um, thank you, uh, Madam President and my dear sister, um, Flavia. And um, hello to all my colleagues, brothers and um, special Rapporteur, my sister Soledad, and my sister, the Executive Secretary, and, and Marisol Blanchard, and all the others from the Commission. And also special welcome to the requesters, civil society for this hearing, and also of the representatives of the state of Chile. It is so vitally important when, when we have the attendance of the state and um, it, its um, representatives in hearings like this. And I have to say I'm particularly interested in this, in this hearing because it so happens that I arrived in the state of Washington near, near Seattle uh, a couple of days ago and just on last night on the news, the um, mayor mentioned certain uh, plans to invest um, some monies to improve and work on the pollution which is affecting the salmons uh, of the indigenous uh, peoples uh, in this area in the north. Uh, and um, and the um, because of the effect of farming. So I thought, wow, I'm doing that tomorrow morning. And here we are tomorrow afternoon. It's afternoon, evening for me. And um, so this is, it seems that the North and the South are suffering from similar um, effects. And, but I just wanted to ask uh, certain questions, which first of all, I, 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 Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I didn't hear from the state any details about what the state is doing in relation to the alleged pollution, which is being caused. Um, I, I, I missed it if it happened because we did have some problems with um, connectivity with some of the speakers. And, um, but you, it was mentioned that the Chilean government passed an anti-terrorist law aimed at indigenous communities. Could I ask the civil society if they could give us some details um, about that assertion um, and, and the contents, specific contents of the law? If and you do need not take too much time today in your second um, answer to deal with it, but if you cannot deal with it effectively, um, to send us some written, your written answer in, in that regard. Because I'm particularly interested in any anti-terrorist legislation which might affect the women of the communities um, um, in, their, in their work to support their families and so on. And um, also, um, it was asserted that there were failed um, the state has failed uh, to, to um, engage in prior consultation and um, the share of information. 
could also could civil society also give some specific um, details as to that um, um, assertion and also and also some more information as to the state's actual dealings with companies receiving concessions uh, um, um, in, in this regard. Um, I, there was a note which I made, if I can just uh, check it. Yes, there was a statement by Mr. Eugenio um, and he said something what's to that effect. I tried to write it down. Now the state grants privilege to these communities. Could you explain that, the use of that term, the word privilege in regard to their ancestral lands and their rights there too, and the user of, of them? Um, I, I, I was interested in, in that use of words. Um, yes, this, this, the, my note was that what that, what that comment could mean in relation to the state's recognition of their rights. And then, um, that's a question for the state. And then, um, the, um, in relation to agencies operating centrally and regionally, could you give um, some, um, more detail as to the, the composition of, the, of this, this, uh, these agencies, because I didn't hear that there were any uh, members of the indigenous community within these bodies, um, which operate centrally um, um, in the monitoring and, and so on, um, which goes on. And also, um, to private development quality of life. Um, um, yes, um, you, the, the state indicates, uh, said that uh, you, you assist women um, for development and training and, and so on and individual initiatives and so on in order to pro provide for their development of cultural activities and qualities of life, which benefit women and their families. Could you be more specific in, in, in this regard? Because that is a nice general statement, but it really says nothing. If you can give us details in that regard. I know my sister um, um, Soledad is going to go into greater detail, which is more specific and, and, and um, expert uh, questions. In, and so I, I finished here. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Margaret. Now I will give the floor uh, to Commissioner Estuardo. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, my colleagues, the Commission's team, and the people. We have representative from civil society, organizations of indigenous communities and from the state of Chile. I would like to say that in the first part of the hearing, I was struck by the fact that, the, was, that I could see in the presentation a very severe impact on the environment, which was described by the organizations. And they indicate that this situation is uh, repeated in a continuous way as an effect or as the consequence of uh, many of these concessions granted uh, for aquaculture. I would then like to pose a question to the state and is the following. Is there any kind of administrative follow-up in environmental terms when we have this kind of situation that as we see from the presentation that it's quite serious or delicate. So my question is, 
whether in the administrative arena, if there is any inspection or verification mechanism for the mitigation of these aspects. That would be my question. I would also like to stand out that what struck me in a positive way was to hear the level of regulation and of institutionality in place. And there are functions, there are roles for the granting of the concessions and for the exercise of those concessions. I think that was uh, quite, uh, quite extensive and I was struck by this preference, preferred right to indigenous communities. And this has to do with custom law, even though you explained what is the proceeding to verify whether there is, uh, if there is custom law, whether you can speak about that pref preferred right as such. I don't know if I understood that well, it suspends any kind of licenses and that license can be rented to a community. And I would like to thank the presence of all people here in this hearing for your valuable contribution. And this allows us to have more detailed and accurate information of certain special situations. And according to our uh, competences, well, we can issue some recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Estuardo, for your intervention. Now, our special rapporteur for environmental, cultural, and economic rights, Soledad, you have the floor. Thank you. Dear Madam President, Vice President and President of this hearing, Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to greet the commission, the representation of the civil society organization and the state of Chile. It has been really important for the Redesca mandate to be part of this hearing and to listen to the information that you have both provided. The commissioners have already put forward many of my concerns, so I will try to be brief. Firstly, I would like to thank you for the information received, but I would also like to express my concern for some of the situations uh, told to us by the civil society. I also took down note of the valuable information the state has contributed as to the different legislation and projects. Among them, the National Plan on Human Rights, and I would take this opportunity to talk about the report that the Redesca drafted for the Commission and was published in 2019, which makes this question, uh, this issue inter-American, let's say. And this has to be taken into consideration, especially in this context based on the inter-American criteria, such as the protection of the environment, which was very well developed by the inter-American court, establishing that that right to a healthy environment as an autonomous right not only implies to protect the environment for the protection of human rights, but also for the environment itself. I believe that those paradigms that are being uh, installed in the inter-American system are very important and they have to be at the core of all public policies. And we would like to keep on monitoring this issue and we are at your disposal and to observe in the field which is the situation and we can also contribute with recommendations. I have a question as to the environmental impact study, because there were certain difference between the civil society and the state. And in the light of the inter-American system, these impacts, these environmental impact studies are one of the obligations 
uh, of the state. So I would like to hear both parties speaking about this topic. And I would also like to ask the civil society organizations now or in writing, if you don't have time, if you can expand on the uh, impact on um, food sovereignty, which is also very important for my mandate. Thank you, dear rapporteur. On my side, I'd like to share three concerns. The first one, I also share the vision, the perception of Commissioner Estuardo. I was really impacted by the presentation of the civil society, the three cases re referred to the three different indigenous communities and the impact in relation to environmental degradation, the risk of the rights of indigenous people, peoples. And I also heard the presentation made by the state clarifying the institutionality, regulation frameworks, the fiscalization of the custom industries. And uh, my first concern or my first question to the state is this legal framework of regulation of impact which warranted participation and engagement, which was the degree of effective implementation of this regulatory framework in the three concrete situations presented today by the three indigenous communities. The third, the second question, considering that there are environmental damage which are really clear and visible. If the state is developing a reparation policy in relation to those damages and the impact on the indigenous communities in relation to the context of salmon farming in Chile. And the third concern and third question is that what we heard from the civil society was a very critical vision in terms of the lack of dialogue and consultation and right to prior and informed consultation, that there was no uh, warranty of that right. So my third question is the following, whether in those three concrete cases, the right to, to prior informed and free cons consultation was respected in relation to the three cases put forward today. So now the methodology will be the following. I will grant 10 minutes to the civil society for their comments and then 10 minutes to the, first to the civil society organization and then to the state. So civil society, you have 10 minutes. Thank you for the very significant questions you posed. I would like the representatives of the community to answer. So as to be brief, we really thank the question, but I believe it's a lack of the respect, the fact that the state only describes the regulations, which is a regulation that the communities already know, and they are continuously uh, putting forward and claiming the enforcement of these regulations and they have not done anything. They they haven't sen said anything as to the incompliance with these laws. There is no single salmon farming project that has been studied by an environmental impact assessment. As, as assessment. So the, regula the regulatory office said that there, there are some aqua aquaculture projects that have been granted within national parks, which are protected by the state. 
I would like to state, as Stefania was saying, what the Chilean state did was to describe its current legislation, but it doesn't say that it violates its legislation systematically. I would like to suggest the reporter, uh, Joel Hernandez, don't eat salmon, Chilean salmon, because when you eat it, you eat the violation of our uh, rights. This is the star of the Chilean government, but it's produced based on the violation of the rights of our indigenous communities. The case of our community is since 2007 in this commission, and it's still waiting for an answer and the Chilean state has lied systematically. We have shown that. And most of these projects of salmon farming have certain impact assessment declarations and no, we cannot have access to those assessments. We, of course, cannot participate in the consultation because they are not transparent. As to the actions carried by CONAVI today, the technical body does not have adequate professionals and the adequate number so that they can carry out the monitoring of these the uses of land. Therefore, there is a delay of over four years. We have there were it was said that there were 10 phases handed and the, the law has been enforced for 13 years but that's not true uh it's not 10 spaces which have been granted only six have been granted to our community in 2010 two spaces were granted and in 2012 that project was reverted and even though it was approved by the commission established by law that space today has not been handed to our community and great part of what we requested was cut so as to leave certain areas enabled for the salmon farming industries to develop their activities, even though what we requested is a very small space compared to what to the spaces the salmon industry has in our region. I am really frustrated for hearing how the Chilean state tries to lie to you so that you can believe a version that it's not true. I invite any people from the government to live during three hours in our, in our community and you will see what we live here, how our human rights are violation, violated. We have to live with horrible odors which are really polluting and they affect our human health. We cannot um, sleep on on the night because of the sound produced by these aquaculture farming um, spaces and all our demands and complaints have not any of them have been heard so we request you to intervene and to call upon the chilean state to re respect our rights thank you very much Leticia Caro. Leticia Caro. Well, if everything worked as described by the institutions of the state, well, probably we wouldn't have anything to do here. We saw the garbage, everything, what is happening in the territory, and it's us who have been in charge of monitoring that situation and we make recurrent complaints and we somehow had certain influence but that's not a, a job that should be done by us it should be by this it should be done by the state by the institutions in charge of that with the laws 
that you have been mentioning and the regulations, well, probably they exist in paper, but in the reality, nothing of what was said is true. In practice, there is no such monitoring. Some days ago, a worker from the salmon farming denounced uh, this uh, salmon farming industry for the practices that are carried out there, we uh, had to request a read so that it could be allowed. But within that proceeding, in an illegal way, the subsecretary of fishing started new concessions. And then salmon farming made us go to the Supreme Court. So when they say that the rights are not vulnerated, are not breached, when they speak about the beautiful legislation we are hearing, we ask ourselves, are we living in Chile? Are we speaking about Chile? Are we living in the, this country where this legislation exists? Well, I believe it's not. And if the communities are expressing ourselves because of this, we would not be here so only because out of our will and to to lose our time to waste our time the benefit of the activity is garbage in the streets increase of the destruction of uh, 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 native species that is the benefit of this activities for those community. That is the benefit between inverted commas we are denouncing today. And that not only affects the indigenous community, but also the civil society which lives within those areas. That is what I wanted to say. I will give the floor to Maria Luisa. Well, the EMPO is the only tool we have as indigenous people for our territories. We have no other tool. In Argentina today, in Tierra del Fuego, they have a law where aqua, well, salmon farming cannot be implemented. Today, the only tool that have are two invisibility reports because it's not legal it's not legal what they answered it's illegal we are not beneficiaries we are you are not eating salmon you are eating chemicals you are eating antibiotics i do not recommend that it's not natural today salmon farming speaks about sustainability that doesn't exist it's not a sustainable industry nor within the territory is not it's not sustainable with the indigenous communities it's not sustainable for the environment and that is shown everywhere it's evidence everywhere the state is blind the only beneficiaries are the industries are the companies because the the state provides um bonuses for these to these companies so they provide billions and our territories are national parks and we have just one person monitoring. He cannot be in the whole territory. That's a reality. The day they come here to monitor the salmon will be very tidy because we all know when they come to monitor these technical reports we had some concessions that were rejected rejected before but today they are going to be be approved and that's inadmissible the only tool we have is the empo and the state is still limiting everything and it's really uh outrageous what the state is doing we the only thing we can do is to defend our territory for us and for our future generations they have to open their eyes and they have to understand what is happening to us today thank you 
Thank you to the civil society representatives for your clarity, for expressing clearly this situation. And now the representatives of the state will have 11 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. First of all, I would like to say that the state with the organizations present here today, the ones related to this topic, we are here in good faith. We have accepted this invitation to the hearing out of respect to the petitioners and the Inter-American Commission. So I would like as all the direct responsible people from the state are participating in good faith. Having said that, there are several questions about several topics. So I'm going to give the floor to the director of the CONADI. Thank you, Ambassador. There are several questions and I would like to answer one. Francisco Vera mentioned the lack of professional professionals from Conari. This is a team that in 2018 was made up by three people. And today we have six experts. As we understand that the proceedings and the reports regarding the use of land were delayed and some dated several years uh, before. So we have anthropologists, attorneys, uh, marine biologists drafting this report. And we have persons in uh, those places and others who are in our office and we keep moving around the different uh, territories we are being informed of. I would also like to clarify something regarding a bonus or subsidize or the creation of anti-terrorist laws. This is something that was passed uh, today. It's not related to this hearing, but I could like to say that this um, modification in the criminal code regarding uh, fire um, when the when certain areas are set on fire and it's related to that those criminal activities. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Regarding environmental pollution, I will give the floor to Eugenio Zamora. Thank you. First of all, I would like to point out that in the law regarding fishery and agriculture, for any person uh, with the license, they should respect the um, the environment preventing any contamination and the different controlling agencies uh, monitor that this duty is complied with and those situations are constantly being monitored regarding the particular situation that was mentioned in the presentation. The truth is we do not have details about that to inform about each situation, but I can say that there's a duty to keep these places clean when that is not respected. There are different uh, bodies in charge of punishing those uh, practices, bad practices, And I would like to point out regarding the uh, system to assess environmental impact. 
we can say that since the uh, system was created in Chile in 1997, all the salmon licenses requests go through this assessment. There are rules and a law uh, to decide when a project should go through in a specific uh, a research or a declaration, not because a project is one area or the other. This implies that a project should go through um, a study or research that is regulated. And in order to answer regarding these three specific cases, we need further detail and we can send that afterwards. Thank you. Thank you, Eugenio. I will now give the floor to Jessica Fuentes, who will make reference to some of the questions asked by the commissioners. Thank you, Ambassador. Good afternoon to everyone. There are several questions that were asked, one regarding the use of ancestral land actually we the law was passed in 2008 establishing the coastline that belongs to indigenous communities and this uh, was aimed at giving a space of access to indigenous communities that could not access through other um, um, instruments but after some time, several situations have occurred. There have been discussions, delays, doubts, and although we have 10 spaces allocated, only six have been granted due to the category that has been established. But there's a category that has to do with the ancestral use of land. These, these uh, unique right there is no re um, other right as the one the indigenous communities have they have a space and that space and that request suspends any other request to access the coastline in that same space so it's a preferential right that is unique in the Chilean legislation. That's something I wanted to say. Secondly, regarding the management system uh, for monitoring these spaces, I believe that when these uh, complaints are filed and it is determined that um, there is an impact, there are mechanism to receive complaints through controlling mechanisms through the Secretariat of um, Environment and also the National Fishery Service is able to receive these complaints. But we also have controlling plans or um, oversight plans to define uh, risks every year. This is a very broad legislation, more than 400 centers that operate right now. So this oversight is carried out. And as we have said, uh, regarding environmental reports that are done at the end of each productive cycle. At the end of each productive cycle, we um, produce the uh, information to analyze the uh, situation of that place after production. There are different uh, researchers. There's a macro system about different impacts problems generated by uh, someone from an industry. And of course, there are always new information addressing new issues. For example, this year, there are new regulations regarding waste management, imposing new obligations to these uh, harvesting uh, centers and now they will have more specific regulations and we don't have much time but regarding whether indigenous communities were uh, taken into account in consultation this was implemented in 2016 from that moment on every time a policy is implemented 
the indigenous consultation takes place. Many of the licenses uh, operating were uh, started operating in the 90s and that obligation did not exist when indigenous consultation uh, was implemented officially in Chile and there are new areas uh, being analyzed for granting licenses. These uh, indigenous communities are taken into account. I hope I have answered some of your doubts. Thank you. I'm sorry, Ambassador, we have not heard. I'm sorry, I don't know, Commissioner, if we have time left. Actually, we uh, have run out of time. And I want to thank the representatives of the state. Thank you for the commission. It's very important to have this space for public hearings for the commission. I think that we have made we need to acknowledge the state of Chile because of the commitment to the inter-American system and the uh, presence of the civil society and state actors. To conclude, I would like to share what is the aim of the commission regarding public hearing. First of all, valuable information. We value this because for the Commission, um, the fact that you provide uh, detailed information enables the activation of mechanisms for the protection and defense of human rights. Secondly, because both parties are listening, civil society, the state, and we have this horizontal space a horizontal space of active listening. And finally, the Commission believes in the good faith and takes advantage of the opportunity to identify strategies, paths, horizons to strengthen the protection of human rights. The transformative mandate of the Commission is aimed at turning human suffering into rights, dignity, respect. That is the contribution of the Commission. On behalf of the Commission, I could like to thank you. And we conclude during this hearing. Thank you to everyone. Muchas gracias, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Thank Ambassador. You.